Getting our friends together isn't as easy as it used to be. We get it. Life comes at you fast. But trust us, your pals are desperate for a good hang. And when they hear you stock the party with drinks from Drizzly, they'll be banging down your door. Let Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery, take care of the supplies. All you need is an excuse. It doesn't even have to be a good one. It's your dog's birthday. The loquats are finally ripe. Whatever. With Drizzly, you can compare prices on a massive selection of beer, wine, and spirits and get them delivered straight to your door, which means you can entice the crew to leave their houses without ever leaving yours. Whatever the occasion, download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Today. Must be 21 plus. Not available in all locations. Man, I wish they had Drizzly when I used to play D&D and riffs. Maybe it's time for me to start again. Thanks, Drizzly. Hey, it's my song. Let's sing it. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Come on, it's gonna be freaking awesome. You know the words. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Hi-ho, Jesse Blaze Snyder here, and it's another episode of The Coolest Geek Alive! But I gotta say, I feel like it's Groundhog's Day, because every time I show up to the mic, I gotta talk about The Last Jedi! But there's so much to say! There's so much to say about The Damn Last Jedi! And, ah, I wanna say it all! I wanna say it all in my own unique way! For those of you who have listened to the previous two episodes... (laughs) of this about The Last Jedi. You kind of know where I'm going with this, but you haven't been able to hear me praise The Last Jedi, and that's what I'm here to do today. I I am going to recap at the end where we're going to kind of trash it a little bit, uh, just because conceptually, a lot of the things that this movie does is responsible for most of the shortcomings of the trilogy as a whole when it all comes together, because so many things in this movie walked back on things that were established in the first movie and gave the third movie uh, less villains to play with and a lot of things to address or to readdress or to have to change or have to change back. And generally speaking, J.J. Abrams, he did not take any of the good ideas from The Last Jedi and move them forward, which is another reason why The Last Jedi sucks so bad. I think, actually, if he had been able to take some of the good stuff from The Last Jedi and actually try to do something with it, uh, The Rise of Skywalker could have been way more satisfying. But he didn't do that for whatever reason. I don't know if he was holding a grudge or what, but he chose not to take these ten amazing things about The Last Jedi with him into the third film. So, okay, first one, quote, To say that if the Jedi die, the light dies is vanity. That force does not belong to the Jedi. This is a commentary on all religion. So many who practice religion like to claim that their God is the God, etc. But the infinity, it doesn't belong to any particular religion. It just is. Thinking anything else is vanity. This is a beautiful bit of ancient wisdom here. We are all one. One with the force in these films and in reality. There is a force working with all of us in reality, in the real world. There's a force. There's an intelligence to the universe that is inherent, built into it. And you know what? It's, it's math. It's, it's alien to us. It's something that we can't exactly understand, but it's there. And to say this like this, you know, like, let's not focus on the Jedi, that the, 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 the force is about these guys with swords. Like, honestly, on the other side of things, in the spirit world, they, they kind of frown on swords. So, like, really devout religious people holding swords, maybe that's not necessarily the best way to go. Uh, so, I, I, lo- I love this. This is a great idea. This is opening up um, the force to be available to anybody You don't have to be studying this thing. Many people are Force-sensitive. Many people are connected. We're all connected, really. Anyway, that's my favorite first thing about The Last Jedi. Number two, this scene ends with Luke spooked by Rey. Oh, this would be great. This is when Luke is training Rey, and he's showing her, he's getting her to feel the Force. He does a really stupid scene where he's he's tickling her hand, and I talked about how this... 
undermining the the force and making it a joke and, and it was one of my pieces of evidence why Zereen Johnson is probably not a geek and he probably does not value these things the way that we do but this right here as the scene goes on she gets she goes right into the darkness and and she says she comes out of it and she's like the, they were, the darkness was trying to show me something and and Luke is like oh my god you, you just went straight into the darkness this that's great oh man if there was more pushing the audience to be nervous about Ray turning, and even better, if she actually turned at any time during this trilogy, if she had turned in the third movie, that could have saved the movie. Really, it could have saved the movie actually having her turn. Actually, could have saved this whole trilogy having her turn by the end of the trilogy or having it be like she was poisoned and she's going to be turned by the end of the next one. All of those things, the idea of taking this quote-unquote Mary Sue type character who hasn't exactly earned uh, a lot of what she has but has been given a lot of innate ability, now make her evil. Now make her the thing that they got to fight. That is a great idea. Um, you know, and at any time during this trilogy, they could have turned the audience around on Ray simply by turning her to the dark side. You know, they do it in wrestling all the time. It's like, you don't like this guy? Well, we're going to make him a heel. You're going to love him. And it's funny because I believe this was only avoided due to corporate stupidity. You know, they don't want their perfect female role model to make a big mistake that they could later learn from. You know, original trilogy redeemed Vader. This one could turn their Luke and still redeem her in the third movie. There's nothing to lose. It's great. People like The Rock, uh, you know, he became popular because they made him a bad guy. And he did a great job at that. And then we, we liked him as being a bad guy. And then when they made him a good guy, we were like, all right, we still like him. That's, that's how you do it. That's how you do it, man. You just got to pay attention to the geek culture shit that's going on all around you. We can tell you. We can tell you what we like. We can tell you how to do it, how to make us happy. It's not hard. It's like learning how to please someone in the bedroom. You know, it's like, nope, that's that kiss is a little too rough. Hey, <laughs> you're, 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 you're scratching me. You're hurting me a little gentle. <laughs> There's some gentleness that needs to go in this stuff. Some finesse, some love, some empathy. All right. Number three, simply bringing attention to one of the most heinous crimes on earth. War profiteering. The planet that Rose and Finn go to is like a um, gambling planet, um, and it's filled with all these rich war profiteers. Dude, our planet is filled with war profiteers. They are the tippy, 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 tippy top of the upper echelons of our society. War profiteers. And they have enough money to control all the decision making. And they profit from conflict. Oh my God, we need attention brought to war profiteers. Historical war profiteers like the Rockefellers and modern war profiteers. And the Rockefellers are probably still doing that too. But this is happening all the time. People are making money from war. And as long as that is the case, there will be violence and death and destruction and suffering on planet Earth. So I love this. You know, I said everyone on this criminal slave planet is an elite profiting off of suffering. And there are children and animals uh, enslaved on this planet and across the galaxy. And that's what the resistance is really about. The people, ordinary people hoping for a better universe. This is the stuff that made people excited about Last Jedi. But only the people who didn't want to kill Rian Johnson by the time we got to this scene. And dude... I wanted to kill Rian Johnson by the time I got to this scene because of how upset I knew he was making all my friends who were big Star Wars fans. I knew how devastated they were going to be by the choices he was making. So by the time this came around, and this is the idea that really matters and, and, and is, is a great focus for the franchise, um, it, it didn't matter to the people who were already too heartbroken by other choices that Rian had made. But... Um, this is real. You know, this is the world that powers an evil empire. This is the reality that explains the happening in a galaxy far, far away, far better than any duel between Jedi and Sith. The rich and callous versus the poor and downtrodden. By the end of the movie, seeing these same kids inspired by the resistance, it's, it's truly great, man. Just thinking about it makes me feel good. You know, it's like that scene in The Iron Giant where... Um, I forget what the little kid's name is. Uh, it's stretching on the tip of my tongue. Hogarth. Hogarth is 
teaching the Iron Giant who Superman is and what Superman's about. And at the end of the movie, the Iron Giant sacrifices himself. And right before he does it, he remembers Superman. Superman. And he puts his fist out and he's going to go do the right thing. Oh, it makes me cry. I, I love that scene in that movie. I love Iron Giant. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm crying. But it, things like this, <laughs> they're my world. They're, they're the things that make life worth living. Something sweet and inspiring and wonderful. And uh, I hate that this wonderful, inspiring thing is in this shit movie. It's so great. The, like these bits and a couple more that I'm going to read. These, this is wonderful. The light that's being brought to these things. These kids being inspired by people standing up for what's right. That is great. Inspiration. Fuck yes. Thank you, Rian Johnson. This is great. I wish more of your film could have felt like this. Uh, but like I've been saying here, there's just way too much wrong for your average Star Wars fan to even notice the really sweet things that are happening. And I don't blame them. A lot more, quote, I don't know about this choices than nailed it. You know, but this is a nailed it. Nailed it. War profiteers. The, 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 the hopeless given hope by the resistance. Beautiful. Number four, the way Luke goes about dissing the Jedi here. It's a bit rough for me, exactly what he says, but much of the point of this scene is wonderful. Hypocrisy, hubris. The Jedi did indeed fail to properly do anything to really defend the galaxy, especially in the scope of this movie where episode six ending has been invalidated. But arguably a Sith defeated the Sith. Darth Vader defeated the Sith. <laughs> the Jedi didn't even defeat the Sith. A Jedi convinced one of the Sith to be a nice guy. So one man turned by his son. <sighs> Prior to all of it, the Jedi sowed the seeds of their own demise. And the Jedi are playing the eye for an eye game. Jedi and Sith, what's the difference? Well, the Sith are evil and the Jedi are nice. Well, how did the Jedi go about being nice? Well, they take out their lightsaber and they cut people in half. Well, that's not very nice. Is it? Is that very nice? <laughs> These are the, the peacekeepers of the galaxy. You know, they're self-righteous brutes to some degree. And, you know, people who know the deeper lore and the deeper religion, uh, they, they may be sitting there going, oh, but there's so many wonderful things to learn. And there are. But in the concept of society and, and in the concept of like, uh, you know, the way we think of in inclusion, like like the idea of like the world has changed, is changing in certain ways, and we want to to have it reflect the reality that we live in, um, you know, which is, is, is good under the right circumstances and, and, and I support under the right circumstances. Um, this is similar, this idea of a oneness of religion, like a, that we're all one, we're connected to each other. All of our religions share the same infinity. You know, we're all exploring the same concept of consciousness. It's just, it's all the same thing. And the Jedi don't have an exclusive contract with God that their religion's the religion. Uh, sorry, the right people were the Mormons and the Jedi. The Jedi and the Mormons were the correct people. They get to go to heaven. Everybody else goes to hell. No, we all go to heaven. We're all okay. Everything's all right. And, uh, you know, and we got to start to introduce concepts like this, inspirational ideas that, you know, uh, uh, the Catholics don't own God. <laughs> Nobody owns God. Everybody's God. It's all the same one universal infinite thing. We are one world. That is not what I believe. It is what is true, is the truth. We are one world, and the only thing dividing us are stupid ideas in some people's heads. And they're not in a lot of our heads. A lot of us, like me, I don't, I don't have that idea in my head. You know, you're my brother, you're my sister. We're all one. And I and I try to treat everybody like that and live that way. That doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to like you and I'm going to want to hang out with you all the time or something like that. But it does mean that I'm going to treat you with as much respect as I can. Go out of my way to make sure that you don't get hurt, that you're not suffering. Yeah, that matters. I get to choose my friends and, 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 and choose how I like to spend my time. But I don't get to choose making sure that everybody is safe and okay 
as best as possible. And I, I don't take this as far as like to the crazy mental health things. I deal with mental health. I've had distraction, uh, uh, depression, chronic pain, anxiety. My whole, I'm still suffering from some of these things to this day. Um, I, I know and understand the real mental turmoil that so many people are going through on this planet. I have, have and, and continue to unfortunately go through some of it myself. But I just need to be afforded the space to heal and, and, and be able to not be harassed and to be able to pursue my personal happiness. You know, that's it. We just all have to have the freedom to pursue our personal happiness and to allow others the freedom to pursue their personal happiness, even if it's different, even if it conflicts with our personal happiness. You know, it, it, most things that conflict ideologically don't necessarily conflict directly. You know, you live over there, I live over here. You know, I'm in my house, you're in your house, and everything's fine. Mutual respect. We are one. These concepts introduced in The Last Jedi, I, 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 I'm so grateful. I just wish they weren't surrounded by so many terrible fucking ideas. Uh, <laughs> number five. The basic story of Luke having given up because he somehow messed it up with Kylo is actually a really good story and needed to be convinced to train Rey because he feels like he's already failed. You know, he feels like he failed his sister. He failed his friend. That's a good story. The, the only problem here is the truth of the story, how it was actually depicted. Again, I said in the last episode, a little bit of rewrite right before this script started being shot, and I could have adjusted that scene, made it largely mostly the same, but in just a couple key ways, made it so that Luke Skywalker does not become Uncle Deadly. <laughs> who's going to kill his nephew in his sleep. It's freaking awful. A couple little adjustments, and this would have been okay. <laughs> but but it, that part of it is really the thrust of it isn't bad. And it, it, it is a nice turn in convention. It is a nice uh, change in my expectations, as long as you can eventually bring my expectations back around to something close to resembling what they were when we began. Number six, great shit. Rose flashes some young slave workers the symbol of the resistance, and it means something to them. In the scene, she just holds open like this little thing, and there's like a secret uh, window kind of thing, and the little window opens up, and you see behind it the resistance logo. You know how many people have gotten the Star Wars resistance emblem tattooed on their bodies? That symbol has great meaning to those in the know. Having these kids know it so well and react to it so great. It's just, it's wonderful on so many levels. These poor kids, they need hope and inspiration and seeing that hope on their faces in this scene and knowing that that hope exists for all the kids in all of the galaxy. It's, it's wonderful. Hope worthy. There's a lot of things in this movie that are fucking, ugh. They, like he just crumpled up the previous hope in favor of delivering us his own hope and his own hope is fucking wonderful it really is but damn it Rian did you have to freaking diss so much of the hope that we were already relying on to get us through this franchise I, I really just, ugh. sorry sorry I told you this was the happy part of the, <laughs> of the review and I'm talking about everything I like I am I'm being kind to the movie right I'm being cool alright number seven things I love alien horses destroy rich people's party well, I mean, it's the equivalent of them destroying a single casino or what have you. But again, if this side quest had anything important to do with the overall narrative, this could all be considered great. Exploring a part of this galaxy far, far away that I'd personally love to see explored more. Don't worry, Rise of Skywalker abandoned every single good thing about this film, so you won't see it anymore. But, uh, you know, Del Toro picks them up. All of this could have meant something if they didn't make it all meaningless just a few scenes from now. And I mean, I'm just thinking as a writer, as I talk to you right now, like, what if they were going to that planet because they had to steal money or take money or or somehow they were really going to take that planet down or that planet, they knew that planet was so important. These were the people who were funding uh, the First Order. And we're gonna we're gonna stop them somehow. We're gonna infringe upon their ability to fund the first order. That's a great storyline. I'd love to see. Yes, 
get the guys who are really responsible. So often, where our soldiers are fighting and killing their soldiers instead of fighting and killing their generals and their war profiteers. I want to see the generals get killed. I want to see the war profiteers get killed even more. I want to see the people who want to see the bad guys win eliminated. Get rid of those motherfuckers. You know, th this is the thing. In, in the real world, I don't want to see anybody die. I want to see everybody learn. I want to see everybody uh, make amends and recover from their mistakes. But it is frustrating. Life and some of the things that get made in fantasy, in fiction, you get to read a comic book like The Punisher and see this dude just take out all the bad guys. And and you, you, you don't sit there and you go, oh, well, maybe he had a wife and kids. You go, ah, yes, we're eliminating evil from the world. Um, but you know that it's just an exercise in blowing off steam and, and letting out some of your frustration on some fantasy. So this is a cool thing. Instead of having it be that Darth Vader, who is the real Darth Vader? It's Daddy Warbucks with all the money who's funding this war and keeping everybody oppressed. I want to see the Star Wars against those mother effers. Don't you? All right, number eight, quote, failure is a great teacher. Live in the now, move forward. A master is what the student will grow beyond. This is an idea about the religion of the Jedi, perhaps evolving in some beautiful future, changing with time, molding itself for a new generation as, it's, as is happening on planet Earth today. Uh, where religious wars once took place, there are now many who subscribe to all of the Earth's religions in one small way or another, like myself, acknowledging all of the ancient wisdom, opening themselves up to a mix of ideas, um, you know, uh, lowering themselves to Jesus and Buddha in the same breath. You know, it, uh, yes, I, I respect you and I respect the trees that our planet Gaia has provided for us. I honor and love all of these things, not I choose Jesus and whoever you like is a jerk. You know, <laughs> that's not a, a really good way to progress the world. The idea of reevaluating the religion to, um, you know, to to bring it somewhere better, you know. But if you're a real fan, the problem is there's a lot of books and comic books that exist that have displayed the religion of the Jedi in ways that are really inspiring. And the fans of Star Wars would love to see that stuff brought to life on the big screen. Granted, moving ahead in Star Wars and moving ahead the religion in this third trilogy of the series, I think that that's perfectly fine. We can always go back in time to learn about the history of the Jedi, learn about what the religion means, and it can still be just as empowering and just as inspiring as it has been for fans of the old graphic novels and fans of the, um, the actual novels. All right, number nine. I do like the fight scene with the Red Guards. Would have been really excited for something like this with the Knights of Ren in the last movie, but no go. Also, Ray saves Kylo. I don't like that either. He's not a scary bad guy because he keeps getting his ass kicked and keeps getting saved by people. Um, but this was fun. I, I, I did enjoy the Red Guard and this fight. It was, it was well choreographed and stuff. It was very cool. Uh, number 10, my last one. People all over the galaxy are inspired by the actions of the resistance. I only wish they were more heroic in their execution. But the kid standing in the open garage doorway with a stick looking up at the stars, that is Star Wars, man. No image says it better. Here we go. He's looking out of a garage, his mechanic, spaceships, things like that. But he's looking up at space and he's got a stick in his hand like he's going to be a Jedi. Ah, beautiful. Beautiful! These 10 things were truly great and beautiful about the movie, but they were surrounded by so much ass. <laughs> I can't believe how hard the establishment tried to argue on behalf of what was done in this film. So much of it was truly just stupid, useless, wasteful. It's a waste of my time. And, and, and where did this film bring us, really? I say, nowhere worth going. Now, that wraps up the movie. That wraps up all the things that I really liked about it. And I really liked the, the little door openings about religion, the inspiration provided by the resistance. You know, these things are powerful. And I really do believe that those things and uh, switching some of the conventions for the more normal audience probably was exciting and interesting to people who were watching the movie because they, they didn't know where it was going to go. They didn't know what was happening. But for people who were fans of the source material, big Star Wars fans, 
this was all rather devastating. I mean, it was devastating that we abandoned the extended universe of Star Wars. And granted, I, I don't even know that stuff, but I know some of the stories that my friends have shared with me, and they're really great. So I would have loved to see that. And everybody was disappointed in that, but you still could have made three great movies on your own. And because of this centerpiece, everything got really, really messed up. So I want to look real quick. We're going to go check out The Force Awakens. The Force Awakens establishes 10 or so things. And let's see where these things are by the time we get to the end of The Last Jedi. We've got one, a budding romance with Ray and Finn. Ray and Finn literally don't see each other for most of the movie, and they finally run into each other uh, part of the way in, and they basically replaced Finn's love interest uh, with Rose Tico, and the audience has not been enjoying that. Uh, we, 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 we really didn't, and there's a lot of reasons that we went over why we didn't. Uh, now, too, we've got Snoke. He's waiting in the wings as the big bad guy, the guy who's the Palpatine-like character who dies in the third film. But instead, Snoke dies in the second film, which to pervert, I mean, to subvert expectations is okay if you have another bad guy waiting in the wings, but you didn't. You had to bring back the one that we killed at the end of the original trilogy, which invalidates the original trilogy. Okay, so, sorry, but Rian Johnson, you're responsible for that. You're responsible for the fact that a new bad guy had to be invented for the last movie because you wanted to have your Viking pyre funeral thing. All right, thing number three, we got Kylo Ren. He kills his father. He's a young, petulant Vader. That actually, that continues. It actually continues to double down on him being sort of young and petulant and sort of keeps him on this downward curve of like he starts out as somebody who might be a threat. And then we're like, no, nah, he's not a threat. No, he's definitely, he's definitely he's, yeah, he's not a threat. Definitely not a threat. Not a threat in any way, shape, or form. Um, four, we've got stormtroopers. They've got a bit of personality, physical comedy. Nothing. We don't get any stormtrooper personality, physical comedy, things that denote that the stormtroopers are people. They're back to just being generic cannon fodder again. So, gone. Walk back on that. Now we got five. Finn is force sensitive, and we see him use a lightsaber, the promise of things to come. Finn, no more force sensitivity, no more lightsaber, and the badass promising young Jedi that we thought we might see based on the posters of him holding a lightsaber in the beginning of the movie. I mean, seriously, if you want to talk about um, virtue signaling, um, Hollywood making choices based on getting a more diverse audience and stuff like that, that poster with Ray in the lightsaber and Finn in the lightsaber. Here you go. We got a black guy with a lightsaber and we got a white woman with a lightsaber. Here you go. We're giving you some diversity. Um, you guys didn't fulfill the promise to that audience that you were trying to sell a Star Wars movie to. You tried to sell them a Star Wars movie and then you didn't even give them their badass Jedi. What the hell? So stupid. Um, Finn versus Captain Phasma ri rivalry. Unacquited rivalry. It's left for future films. We do get a conclusion to that rivalry. I didn't want that rivalry to conclude so fast and it wasn't satisfying. Also, is Finn okay? Uh, whatever. Yeah, like they, they just flip that over. He's fine. Poe Dameron is brave and generally great at his job. Nope, now he's an idiot and he's getting endangering people's lives and, and actually getting members of the Resistance killed because of his actions. Um, now we got, there's a suggestion of deeper exploration for many of the, the, the TIE fighters, the background characters, part of the Resistance. Nope, Rian Johnson doesn't continue with any of those characters who were in the background who we were kind of interested in. Oh, maybe they'll, maybe they'll bulk up his character. Maybe they'll bulk up his character. Nope, none of that continues. Rian just does his own thing. Also, there's a subtle suggestion that somehow Ray might be the daughter of any number of people. Nope, Ray's the daughter of no one. She's no one. She's got nothing to do with anybody. And the movie ends with the Resistance destroying Starkiller Base and Ray defeating Kylo for now, First Order and retreating. What did we say? The very opening of the movie, the scrawl goes back on the fact that the last movie ended with a victory. And lastly... The great, you know, there's a scene in the Avengers movie, one of the Avengers movies, uh, I think it's the second one, uh, Age of Ultron, where Iron Man's having post-traumatic stress and he like sees all of the Avengers have defeated and they're at the foot of these people. Um, all of these things work because 
we never see Thanos defeated. So he seems like a real threat because we've seen everybody's almost dead. Things like that are the things that built Thanos to be really big. Well, we've got a similar dream sequence or a mystery box in J.J. Abrams' Force Awakens. And it's Luke Skywalker faceless with R2-D2, Dark Battlefield, promising a fight with Luke, Rey, and all of the Knights of Ren. Well, everything that happened here guarantees that that's not going to happen unless they decide to bring Luke Skywalker back from the dead after they just killed him at the end of the freaking movie. And of course, they don't. They didn't. So what do we have of these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve things that I've written here? I think two of them were continued on. Kylo's petulant Vader, mm-hmm. Finn versus Captain Phasma, but they end it too early, so that's like a half a point I'll give you, Rian, for continuing the thing. There's literally two things. It's just two things. Everything else is subverted, walked back, or changed. Now, tell me, if you've listened to all three of these things, does this sound to you like a successful film? Does this sound to you like (laughs) the thing that conversations are being had about on the internet? I mean... People talk about this movie like it's so great. It's objectively awful. And I really think that people are fighting for it for all the wrong reasons. Some of those reasons being that it does have some redeeming value. It does have some redeeming value. But that redeeming value is buried in a lot of irredeemable shit. And most of the irredeemable shit is squarely on the shoulders of of the things that have already come and have already been established. And most of the good things are things that are being sort of freshly introduced. And it's like, hey, here's my new Rian Johnson coat of paint. And his Rian Johnson coat of paint is great, except he trashes everything that he didn't invent. Ugh. Well, I really enjoyed talking about this with you guys. I hope you enjoyed it too, for you writers out in the audience, really um, looking at The Last Jedi, studying it, and listening to people talk about The Last Jedi, listen to the audiences and what their reactions were, various ways, for good, for bad, all these things. Oh, it's a great lesson in people, human beings, how we absorb entertainment, what creates conversation amongst us, all that stuff. And I, I really highly recommend you go and check out other people who have done stuff. Like on YouTube, I'm, I'm, I like to watch YouTube and um, Nerd Rotic and Midnight's Edge and uh, Doomcock. So many people have done some amazing breakdowns on some of these films and really pointed out plenty of things that I haven't even pointed out here. But this was the stuff that was important to me that I wanted to talk about. And um, I really find this conversation in particular about The Last Jedi as a bad example of adaptation to be a worthy conversation for the fandom to have. Because if we can learn the right lessons from The Last Jedi, we can have better art in the future. We can have a better fandom in the future. We can have better Star Wars in the future. We can have better superhero movies in the future. We can have better adaptations in the future if we just pay attention to what went wrong here. And a lot went wrong here. Some things went right. And we need to fan the flames of the things that went right. And we need to snuff out all the shit that went wrong. Recognize what it looks like so we recognize it next time when we see it. And we can get rid of it. All right. Let's wrap these things up here. Uh, I don't know what I'll be putting out next week because I'm a little bit ahead of myself with this three-parter for The Last Jedi. So, I don't know. I'll say it might be my Grayson episode. It might be something else. Whatever floats my fancy when I get there. But um, I'm going to keep being here week in, week out, every Wednesday, talking about adapting geek culture the right way. And I'm sorry, friends, but Last Jedi is not geek culture adapted the right way. I love you. I appreciate all your support. I appreciate you rating our show. I appreciate you subscribing to it. And um, if you have anything to say to me, drop me an email. I'm Jesse Blaze, J-E-S-S-E-B-L-A-Z-E at jessesnyder.com. That's jessieblaze at jessiesnyder.com. I'm also on Twitter at CoolestGeekJBS. And um, I've got a really cool Kickstarter campaign that's going to be going live in a few weeks. It's called King of Kings. You can search it up on Kickstarter right now. Uh, We're just fundraising $10,000 for the first issue, which is done. It's just to print it and to make a bunch of really cool stuff in association with it for our backers. And I'm so excited for you guys to read it. It's a comedy that uh, I co-created with a, a great friend of mine. And we really tried to do this the right way. Everybody was paid 
well <laughs> to do their work and everybody owns uh, at least a small stake in the book. So if the book does well and we profit and we make money, a lot of people will profit and make money. You'll be feeding a lot of people's families, a lot of creative people's families if um, King of Kings is a big success and, and takes off. So I hope that you'll help uh, promote it. I hope that you'll go check it out. And if you like it, you'll order yourself a copy of the book or order one of our bigger packages or whatever it might be. But we need your help. We need your money to print the book and to get this all done. It's a labor of love. It's been, I've been working on this book for like 10 years now. And I, we actually got, we got banned on Indiegogo, we got shadow banned uh, a bunch of years ago now, um, and I didn't know I was banned. And I found out this Christmas that I had been shadow banned and that it didn't have anything to do with the book. I thought like people just didn't react to the book or something, and I kind of like gave up for a second because I was dealing with a little bit of life stuff. Um, but I am back into the swing of it. I'm building this Kickstarter. It's really beautiful. I've been freshening up all my Photoshop skills and making all these covers and making all these incentives, really cool stuff for our project. But uh, please, Go to Kickstarter right now, type in King of Kings, number one in the comics, um, and you will find my book and hit notify me when this goes live because it'll be going live in just a few weeks. Anyway, I, I say this all the time. I, I love you guys. I do. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me your time. Thank you for being here with me. Thank you for caring what I have to say. Thank you for caring how much I love this stuff and hopefully... Um, agreeing with so many of the positions that I try to take uh, on this world and on this material, uh, not being partisan, not hating on everybody, even though I am hard on this material and I, and I will continue to be hard on this material, but I love everybody. I love the fandom. I want us all to get along. I want us to stop this stupid, useless fighting. We are the good guys. We are the people who love and respect heroes. We got to come together. We got to be more like our heroes. Just think about how inspiring that would be if our fandom could come together and change itself. Well, I say that's the beginning of changing the world. But instead, right now, we're allowing stupid, petty, superficial society to change us. We're allowing society to change geek culture and make it ugly and petty like society typically is. I don't know about you, but I love sci-fi and I love comics and I love D&D &D, and I love art because I don't like petty bullshit. I want to live in a better world. Maybe you can come live there with me. Before we get out of here, I got your homework assignment, a very special one brought to you by my best buddy, Aaron Sparrow. As I said, I've become a Star Wars fan, but he is one of the OG Star Wars fans. He has filled me with so many amazing tales of the extended universe. And I asked him, what are the best extended universe comic books or novels that I could recommend to people? And he says, I recommend they start with Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire, then Dark Force Rising, then The Last Command, collectively known as the Thrawn Trilogy. I'd seen this recommended online in different places. I've never read it myself, but if you're a big Star Wars fan and you want to take a little bit of look into what the extended uh, universe has to offer, go for the Thrawn trilogy. Timothy Zahn's Heir to the Empire. Check it out. You will not be disappointed. So says Aaron Sparrow. If you are disappointed, go to him because I, technically speaking, I don't know that this is great. I didn't get to read it myself, but I do trust Aaron Sparrow's opinion. Anyway, I'll see you guys all next time on The Coolest Geek Alive. Peace! Isn't that heavy? I'll play that! It's gonna be freaking awesome! Coolest alive! It's gonna be freaking awesome! Stay with your tribe! It's gonna be freaking awesome! Revenge of the Geeks! It's gonna be freaking awesome! Week after week! It's gonna be freaking awesome! Laughing with you! You've been listening to Coolest Geek Alive with me, your host, Jesse Blaze Snyder. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more excellent geek culture content. Thanks for listening.
It's gonna be freaking awesome. Talking some shit. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Living the shit. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Food in our mouth. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Get in the mouth. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Tell all your friends. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Awesome! Freaking awesome! It's going to be freaking awesome! Just wait! You'll see! You'll all see! <laughs>